One of the problems with the lone divider method is sometimes I'm still jealous of what other people got. I, for example, might have a piece that's worth 35%, which is more than a fair share, but someone else got a piece that I think is worth 40%. And that's not fair. I'd like to have a little veto power over somebody taking a piece or a little more control over that. And so that's going to lead to our next uh, method of fair division called the last diminisher. Rather than assigning values, we're going to try a different method to cut into parts and divide. The question is going to be, can something be divided without assigning value? And we're going to use this process called the last diminisher. And the idea of the last diminisher is everybody gets an order. You can randomly select an order by maybe drawing numbers at a hat. And then the first person cuts one fair share. And then the next person looks at that fair share and makes a choice. If this person thinks it's less than a fair share, implying the uncut portion is worth more, the next person can skip on it and wait for a bigger piece to come later. If the person thinks it's more than a fair share, that person will trim it down to a fair share. And because they're trimming it or diminishing it, this person is called a diminisher. Hence the name last diminisher. And then it goes to the next person. In fact, each person makes the same choice. Now that it's been trimmed, do I want to skip it or trim again? And this keeps going all the way down the line. And then at the end, the last person to cut it gets the piece. So if the first person cuts a fair share, the next person skips it, the next person says, I'm going to trim it down a bit, the next person skips it, then we're done. We go back to the last person who trimmed, the last diminisher, and say, OK, this piece now belongs to you. And then we repeat the process with the remaining players. and remaining stuff, whatever we're dividing up. So let's take a look at an example of doing this exact process. Let's first do a visual example. Let's say three salespeople. are going to divide the town. That way, they're not infringing on each other's uh, territory. So we're just going to say, for simplicity's sake, the town is a square. And so the first one says, OK, I'm going to cut out what I think is a fair share. 
and the first person divides the left one third. And so the first salesperson thinks, okay, I'm going to divide the left one third, and I'm going to call that my fair share. Well, the second person looks at that and feels the left one third of the town is maybe more affluent, which will result in more sales. So she wants the more sales, more affluent side. So she divides it again. And says, I think if I divide it right here, this top part is probably more of a fair share because there's more money there for the salesperson to take advantage of. Well, the third person doesn't like that smaller piece, so the third person passes. Which means at this point, we've gone through the entire thing. Person number two, then, is going to lay claim to that piece. That piece belongs to person number two. Person number one is OK because it looks smaller than a fair share to that person. And person number three is OK because they've already had a chance at it and they passed. Person two is happy because they cut it. Everyone's happy. And now we go to the next round where we look at the remaining stuff. And the first person divides the remaining part. and claims, let's say, the lower half. So the first person says, OK, I'm going to cut now like this. And I'm going to claim the lower part as my fair share. Well, the third person has a choice to either trim it and claim it or pass and take what's left. Let's say the third person passes. In that case, the first person gets the south piece. And the remaining person, the third person, gets the north piece. So three lays claim to the southern part. And then, oops, sorry, not three, one, because one cut it. One lays claim to the southern part. And salesperson three lays claim to the northern part. And now they've divided up the town, and everybody is content because everybody's had a chance at each piece or passed at each piece. That's kind of visually what we're doing with this last diminisher method. Now, let's take a look at another example then where we actually look at a little more of a concrete case. Let's say five players divide a $20 cake. Player one makes a cut. of fair share. And the remaining players place value on the slice. And it may have been trimmed. What I mean by that is the value is the value of the piece as it stands when the person gets, a take, gets to take a look at it. 
So here's the slice. Player two is going to think it's worth $3. Player three is going to think it's worth $5. Player four is going to think it's worth $3.50. And then player five is going to think it's worth $3. Now, it is a $20 cake, and we have five players. So that $20 cake divided by five, $4 is a fair share. So when player one divided this piece out, player one thinks this is a $4 piece. Player two says, hmm, I don't think so. It looks a little small. So player two is going to skip the piece. Player four, player three looks at the piece and says, that piece looks a little big. I think that piece is actually worth $5 more than a fair share. And so player three will trim it down to a $4 piece. Player three is trimming it down to a fair share. Player four looks at that trimmed piece and says, gee, that's only worth $3.50. I'm going to skip. Player five then looks at the piece and says, gee, that looks like it's only worth $3.50. I'm going to skip. And so now player three gets the piece because player three was the last one to cut the piece. Player three is a piece that player three values at $4. And then we're going to repeat the process with a second round. Player one cuts another piece. And we have the following. We've got the slice. Player one cut. Player two is going to get to choose. Player three already has a piece, so player four would be next. And then player five would be next. This new piece, player two thinks is worth $7. Player four then is going to look and say it's worth $3. Player five will look and say it's worth $5. So when player two looks at the piece, remember a fair share is a $4 piece. Player two says this is worth more than a fair share. Player two will trim to a $4 piece. Player four looks at that and says, gee, that's only a $3 piece. Player four would skip it. And player five will say, gee, I think that piece is actually worth $5. And here's what's exciting about being the last player. Player five knows if they trim this piece at all, they will get the piece. And remember, each player will always act in their best interest. Players one, two, and four have already had a shot at this. They don't want it if it's trimmed at all. And player five will trim very little, which almost doesn't affect its value at all. Just cut off a hair. But since they're the last trimmer, player five gets the piece. And actually, player five values it at almost a $5 piece. Player five's happy because player five feels like they got more than a fair share. But the other players aren't upset because they've already passed on this piece. And so in this way, everybody is still happy with the result. And so then this process continues until everyone has a piece. And everyone will be happy because everyone has had a chance at every piece or they've passed on it. So that's our last diminisher method. It gives everybody a little bit more control over the outcome, not giving the lone divider uh, the majority of the control. So this process might work a little bit better. It's your chance to practice a few of these. And then in our next video, we'll take a look at what we do if we can't 
cut things up. Like if we're dividing up a house and a car, you can't do half the house and two thirds of the car. We need a better way with discrete things that can't be cut up.